Hey guys, welcome to my video on regression and multicollinearity. Uh, I'm actually not going to do much with this graph. I got a cooler graph I'm going to show you that looks like that, and it's going to be pretty cool. And I'm going to use it to explain what multicollinearity is, but I should back up a little bit. Really quick crash course on regression. We got a bunch of data where X is our independent variable or feature and Y is our dependent variable or target. And yeah, there's all these things. And our computer tries to fit the data with this line. This is how standard regression works. And the way it works is it minimizes the sum of squared errors. Now, what is an error term? Well, an error term is the gap between the actual data point, the YI, the thing we observe, and what we predicted it would be at that level of X. There's an error term. Here is another error term. Here's another one. Okay, every point has its own error term. And when we talk about regression, what it tries to do is it takes all of these, square them, and then add them up. And you get something called the sum of squared errors, which is also called the SSE. And the way regression works is it chooses the ideal beta, which is my coefficient. I guess here I wrote B instead of beta, but whatever. It chooses the ideal beta to minimize the sum of squared errors. Now, higher dimensions of regressions do the same thing. You can put a whole bunch of variables in here. Uh, but when you add more variables, sometimes you run into a problem called multicollinearity. Try saying that five times fast, huh? Multicollinearity. That is what ha what we call it when two variables, two X variables are correlated with each other because uh, they're supposed to be independent. But if they contain some of the same information, they're correlated. So we call them collinear. So let's take a look at this real quick and see why it's a problem. Uh, briefly, let me show you some code. And this code, I'm not going to go crazy in depth on it. It's all available in GitHub, and I put some cool comments in it so you can see it. And it looks like this. There's 100 observations in 10 different sets of data. Now, each of these data sets is going to have different levels of multicollinearity. The first one won't have any. They'll be perfectly independent from each other. And then as we go through ten more, the other 10, it gets more and more so that these two variables are related. Um, I'm, I create two variables. It's a very simple regression. Um, I even omitted an intercept just for convenience. Doesn't change any of the concepts involved, so don't worry about it. Uh, but basically, I have 10 different small data sets of 100 observations each, and I built them, which you'll be able to look at it here, so that with each one, they are more and more reflecting information that is shared between them. So X1 and X2, my two variables, are more and more like each other as we go from one to 10. Uh, so anyway, then I calculated my sum of squared errors for a bunch of betas. I didn't feed it into a regression. Uh, because I'm not trying to have the computer just run one for me. I'm trying to do a demo of how the sum of squared errors are off, uh, of how big the sum of squared errors are uh, for different beta pairs. All right, so I take it through this loop for my two different betas. And then I also do it once for each of those 10 sets. And I calculate the sum of squared errors. What is it? Yeah. Oh yeah, I also built like a little statsy model in here. It's really arbitrary, and so I'm not going to get lost in it. But it's the gap between the actual data and our model's predicted data. Take that gap and square it, and then sum it all. And I also made it negative for visualization purposes. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. So with no further ado, let's go to my little visualization here. Uh, and there is a link to this 
in the video description also you can fiddle around with it right like you can mess with the angle of how you're viewing this thing uh, but here is an example of a regression with no multicollinearity. There's beta 1, there's beta 2, and so values increasing this way, values increasing this way, and some of squared errors. Remember, I've inverted it, I've made it negative, so that these high points up here, these reddest points, are the ideal points. The sum of squared errors is minimized. Uh, so what a regression would do is a regression would zoom in on this point right there and say that's it that is the perfect point that minimizes your sum of squared errors and it would choose the beta one and beta two that go with that point all right so that beta one that goes there and that beta two that goes there it's fitted but what happens if x1 and x2 are related to each other let's take a look so I made a set here that is slightly more collinear. And you're going to notice that there's still probably some sort of an optimal point, but that circle became more of an oval. More collinear, it becomes more of an oval. Now, why is that important? Let me exaggerate it a little bit. I'm going to go to a more extreme example. Let's go to the panel six. All right. Look at this up here. The farther along we go to more and more collinear, the more it becomes the case that there doesn't seem to be one unique answer, right? This combination of beta 1 and beta 2 gives me the exact same result as this combination, gives me the exact same result as this combination. They all have the same sum of squared errors. Right? That is the problem with multicollinearity, is when there's a lot of it, our regression doesn't know how to assign a unique value to beta 1 and beta 2, because honestly, there's this bandwidth in here where our algorithm can't tell the difference between any of those points. Now, incidentally, it doesn't matter for prediction. If you're just trying to get the correct number of yeses and nos or the correct output is fine because you're still getting that perfect spot with the least sum of squared errors. But if you're interested in interpreting any of the out any of the results. If you're interested in seeing what the relationship is between x1 and our dependent variable, or x2 and our dependent variable, multicollinearity messes it up because they overlap so much that a regression cannot by itself sort them out. I tell my students they're telling the same story, and so it's hard to separate it. Right? If there were no multicollinearity, again, remember, there is one neat point. There's no multicollinearity. There's one neat point that maximizes this mountain or minimizes the sum of squared errors. If there's a lot of multicollinearity, there's not. There's this ridge here that just is all the same. Now, another side note, uh, there are ways around this. Uh, there are some simple ways like if you have two collinear variables, you can just drop one from the regression. Or you can multiply them by each other. We call it an interaction term. And just include the one interaction term. Those are some pretty simple ones. Uh, other versions is you can do variations on a regression. There's something called a ridge regression. Hey, maybe it like uh, does something where it takes advantage of this, where it accounts for this ridge feature here. Yeah, go figure. Uh, and a lasso regression can also address this. Uh, so there's ways around it, but these are things that are problematic if you're just using simple regression. Uh, yeah. So I think that's about it for this little demo. Uh, stick around and I will show you how, I'll walk you through a bit of the code for the app, but nothing crazy. Ultimately the code is posted and has a lot of comments in it, so you can check it out. 
But uh, yeah, so I showed you, here's where you made these fake data sets. That's not really part of the app. Uh, now what I did was I created two beta vectors. Right? Uh, so there were 20 beta ones along this axis and 20 beta twos along this axis spread out over lots of values. I hid the values because it's all arbitrary, but whatever. And I created this SSE array, which was a matrix of sum of, square, sum of squared errors for all 400 of these beta one, beta two pairs. And that also got repeated for all 10 of these data sets. So this little loop actually is doing 4,000 sum of squared errors calculations for all 400 beta pairs for all 10 data sets. That's how I built that big mountain for you. Um, there's the part where I negative to the sum of squared errors to make it be a mountain instead of a bowl. You can change it if you want to. Uh, all right, then I start the app. Created my title panel, created a sidebar layout. Now what's in the sidebar? I created a panel where users can choose three things. They can choose the multicollinearity factor, that like one to 10 scale, which takes me through the 10 data sets. Uh, it starts at value one. Uh, they also choose a slider for the display angle and for the horizontal display angle. And then that's the side panel. That's the stuff that the user chooses. There's a main panel, which just has this sum of squared errors plot and that text explanation, which you can read on your own. And then I have to like make this thing smart. I have to make it use that user input and plug it into my graph. So I told it, let's see, I said that it was gonna plot the SSE plot. Notice that wasn't anywhere up here, but I tell it what that means now. Output dollar sign SSE plot is, uh, I use the render plot command, which says I'm gonna put a graph in my shiny app. And then for my 3D graph, I used this function. Anyway, and I plugged in my beta one vector, okay, the 20 values along there, my beta two vector, my 20 values along there, and my SSE array, my 10 matrices of the 400 pairs. Uh, and I said that it's going to input all rows and all columns, but only of, the multicollinearity set that we chose, right? That was this thing, MC set. Users chose a value between one and 10 on this little slider. And that value that they chose is being input here. So it's extracting a separate matrix from this array. Uh, likewise, it's extracting their phi and their theta, the angles, vertical and horizontal for viewing this thing. And there's a bunch of formatting stuff, which I thought made the graph pretty. And then I also threw in my reader text. And then boom. All right, so check out that code if you want to. Uh, all right, guys. I know it's kind of an off-brand video. I thought that was kind of cool. It gave me a chance to practice Shiny. And I use GitHub, multiple commits, man my first time. So uh, check it out. GitHub link with all the code is in the, pro is in the video description. The app link, so you can fiddle around at those angles if you want to, is also in the video description. That's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck. Happy econing or data sciencing or whatever it is you're doing. Good luck, guys.